So now we're going to look at the second component of free market portfolio theory, and this is modern portfolio theory or diversification works. This was developed using the concepts of Markowitz, Sharp, and Miller. Modern portfolio theory is an examination of portfolio performance based on risk return. This theory won these three men the Nobel Prize in 1990. <clears throat> this is Dr. Harry Markowitz. He's the par pioneer of modern portfolio theory. His doctorate paper was written in 1952, and it won the Nobel Prize in 1990. It took nearly 40 years for computer technology to advance to the point where the theories could be proven. Like Albert Einstein, he wrote the black hole theory on the back of an envelope, but it wasn't until 40 years later that a black hole was actually discovered in space by the Hubble telescope. Mr. Markowitz, like Einstein, was truly ahead of his time. He's the one who figured out how to use the efficient frontier to look at risk and return. So this is Markowitz's efficient frontier. It's a hypothetical graph that illustrates an optimal portfolio return for any given level of risk. For example, if you take an investor who has 100% of their money invested in the S&P 500, you have a historical rate of return of around 10%. If you take the red dot, follow it all the way to the left, you can see it's almost 10%. And if you have uh, the level of risk of about 19 units of risk if you take the red dot and go straight down. What Markowitz found out was if you were comfortable with that level of risk, you could go from the red dot and straight up and gain 2 to 3% more per year on your return. If you were comfortable with the return but not the risk, you go to the far left and reduce your risk to about eight units of risk or less. Basically cut your risk in half and keeping the same return. So using what is called free market investment analysis, we're able to plot where your current investment portfolio falls on this fresh efficient frontier and determine what your expected return and the level of risk that you're taking. We're going to talk more about that later. So the question is, how do you create an optimal portfolio considering that we don't want to employ those traditional investment strategies of stock picking and market timing? <clears throat> to do that, we're going to look at the determinants of portfolio performance. This study shows that 91.5% that of a portfolio's investment return is gained through the allocation of the asset classes. In translation, what mix of asset classes did you pick? So again, we see that utilizing the methods of market timing, which is about 1.8% of the determinant, and it's typically negative, and stock selection, which is about 4.6%, again, usually negative, do not add value to the return of an investment portfolio. This means that you need not worry about which individu individual stocks you own, but rather how each type of security is represented in your portfolio and how these instruments work together, which brings us to the idea of co correlation. Correlation is the cornerstone of diversification, and you can get a higher return with less volatility. So the question is, what is correlation? Correlation is the relationship between two investments. Let's take a look at how similar or dissimilar they behave in the market. Utilizing investments with low correlation is one of the best ways to reduce risk in your portfolio. Now, finish this statement for me. If you want extra return in your investment portfolio, you have to take more what? Most people would say risk. And I would have said the same thing five years ago. But that's completely wrong. In his research, Harry Markowitz also proved that you can combine different assets within a portfolio with, which will offset one another because of their correlation relationships. What we're looking for are assets with dissimilar price, price movements or move in the opposite direction so that when one goes down, the other has a good potential of offsetting it with an up period. Markowitz measured the likelihood of various asset categories moving in opposite directions. It is possible to have two assets that by themselves look fairly volatile, but when you combine them in this way in a portfolio, you actually increase the rate of return and reduce the volatility. So correlation is the cornerstone of diversification. Now let's look at, a, at building a portfolio using the benefits of correlation. <clears throat> Here's how to increase returns in lower volatility. The lower the correlation between two asset categories, the less similar they are. So we're going to look at the S&P 500. If we invested 100% in large U.S. stocks, we would have an average return of about 11.75% and a volatility factor of about 18.09. Let me backtrack for just a second. I'm going to explain some terms. Have you ever heard someone say, well, you should always consider risk in the investment process? but they rarely show you how to measure it. They don't show you a way to compare risk in one investment to an alternative. They just refer to it in conceptual terms. Academics measure risk mathematically, and it's called standard deviation. All you have to do is remember that standard deviation is a form of volatility. The higher this number is, the higher the volatility. 
So in this simplistic uh, example, we're going to begin to diversify the S&P 500 portfolio by adding 30% large international stocks. And we actually increase the return, but our volatility is reduced. If we continue to diversify by adding 10% into small international, we again increase the return. But look what happens to the volatility. It's about 15 basis points less than our original portfolio. So this was a very simple hypothetical example. We've been able to add 1% return to the portfolio with no additional volatility over the same period of time. So free market portfolio theory tells us that there's an efficient market hypothesis which says that prices are rational and then there's modern portfolio theory which also shows us how to use correlation to create an investment portfolio with less risk and more return. Now let's check out the third component of free market portfolio theory, the three-factor model, in the next video.